and uh, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's Martin, and this channel, by and large, is me sharing some of my experiences now that I've retired. Now, with this vlog, uh, probably be a, a little bit shorter than normal, um, but uh, it's looking at a specific thing rather than the cruise. And this came about uh, when somebody, quite a while ago actually, quite a few years ago, mentioned a thing called the Erith Bulwark. Now, uh, my dad used to be in the forces and I remember him on one of his postings uh, telling me about HMS Bulwark. So I thought, well, Erith Bulwark? It's a bit strange. Definitely haven't seen a ship, um, particularly remembering that the HMS Bulwark was an aircraft carrier. Particularly hadn't seen an aircraft carrier in Erith. So I did a little bit of research uh, and found HMS Bulwark, which uh, was commissioned in 1954, I believe, as an aircraft carrier with the Royal Navy. Then it was converted to a, a sort of commando support ship, uh, I think in the 70s. And then it was decommissioned in the 80s and unfortunately scrapped in also in the 80s. But then I found Erith Bulwark, which was a, an earth fort dating back to the Civil War. So then I got curious and thought, well, what is a bulwark? So you go online and the first thing I found, it's an extension to the ship's sides above the level of the deck. I thought, well, that's taken us back to an aircraft carrier. Then I found a definition. It's a word for something that protects us from a, dif uh, a dangerous situation. I thought, we're getting somewhere close now. And then I found solid wall-like structure raised for defence. I thought, now we're getting somewhere. Now, I have to admit that when I was told about the bulwark in Erith, um, to my shame, I didn't go and see it straight away. In fact, I didn't go and see it at all. Um, I finally got into a situation where I was close to it when I was on the boat, actually passing through Erith, and I thought, oh, Erith bulwark, I'll go and have a look. Now, these earthworks were raised during the English Civil War, uh, during military operations between 1642 and 1645. They were designed uh, to provide temporary pr protection for the infantry and to act as gun emplacements. The earthworks, which may have been reinforced with revetting, consisted of banks and ditches varying in complexity from simple breastworks to complex systems of banks interconnecting trenches. The fieldworks at Erith uh, are easily recognisable and well defined. From aerial photographs you can see every single feature, but even on the ground you can make out the walls and the bastions. In fact the only area that has suffered any damage to the bulwark is in the southern corner. If you know what you're looking for, the banks, parapets and bastions contain details of the construction, and the ditches, uh, because they were waterlogged and silted, uh, have provided uh, organic and inorganic artefacts. Erith Bulwark is amongst one of the most elaborate fortifications in England to have survived from the Civil War. The structure shows a, a clear continental design and influence uh, and how those ideas were adapted in an English context. And that could be seen by the way the, the bastions are actually situated and, and built so that guns and cannons could be fired in any direction without firing on their own people. The bulwark was built, presumably, uh, to defend against any attacks coming along the Huntingdon to Ely Causeway. Uh, it was always also there probably to protect against any ships that were coming up the newly created Bedford River, which at the time there was only the one. The sighting of this bulwark probably goes to demonstrate the important strategic position that Erith held along these two important access routes and how Erith was important in the protection of the Isle of Ely. Now, in the southern bastion uh, with the, in the bulwark is an Alan Williams gun turret and a spigot mortar base, both of which are from the Second World War. The Alan Williams turret was made of steel and was used for anti-aircraft and ground defence using a variety of machine guns. It could rotate through a full 360 degrees. This one at Erith would have had a hatch on the top and a hatch on the side. Unfortunately, these are both gone and could be accessed from the little trench to the side. The spigot mortars were heavy and, and rather crude in, in design 
and were intended to be used against tanks and ground forces. They could either be fitted with splayed out legs or, as in this case, fitted onto top of precast concrete plinths. But it's great to see artefacts from two of our wars spread out over 400 years in the same place. So why such defences in Erith during the Second World War? Well, it was probably something to do with the protection of the flood defences that existed then and continue to exist now. There's the sluices, the banks, uh, all of those that infrastructure that goes to protect what was and still is an important food growing area for the country. Now, on a slightly more sombre note, uh, at the entrance to the site of the uh, bulwark is a memorial to the to the crew of a, a Stirling bomber from RAF 7 Squadron uh, based at Oak, RAF Oakington. This bomber collided with the Hurricane of 56 Squadron and crashed about one and a half miles north of Erith. All the crew members were killed. Ronald Taylor from the Royal Australian Air Force, John Marler from the RAF, James Waddle, Francis Lloyd, Alan Lowe, Edward Blakelaw, and D.M. Brown, all of the RAF's volunteer reserves, all lost their lives on the 17th of January, 1942. So then, that's an end to this one. Uh, a little bit shorter than normal, but as I said before, I wanted to give it its own space rather than try and cram it into a, a, a cruising vlog. Uh, I hope that was successful. Um, if you aren't already, then uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to know what I'm up to next and where I am, then uh, click on the notification button. And uh, if you enjoyed this, then give us a thumbs up. Okay, till next time, see ya.